The Mimic is one of the strongest spirit summons in Elden Ring. I believe that no one would argue against that. Furthermore, in my opinion, the Mimic is the absolute best spirit summon in Elden Ring. Top 1, no questions asked. It can provide you with great defensive advantages or it can put massive amounts of damage on the table, whatever you need, at the Ring of the Bell. The reason why this spirit summon is so good is its main characteristic. The Mimic copies your character at the moment that it is summoned. In short, it puts a second copy of your Tarnished on the battlefield and that generates a huge amount of value. This creates a lot of possibilities as to the type of Mimic that you're going to get and quite frankly it also brings up a very interesting point. If you don't build your Mimic well, it is not going to be very good. At the end of the day, the Mimic is an extension of your own character, your own build. As such, the better your build, the better your Mimic. And still, even with a min-maxed build, there are things that we can do and understand in order to increase the usefulness of our very own carbon copy. One of the most important things that you can do to increase the power of your character is to master the Mimic. Let's get started. Mechanically speaking, the Mimic is a spirit summon that we can find within the world of the Lands Between. Once we find it, we can summon it to help us during the battles where spirit summoning is allowed. The game goes on to explain that the Mimic conjures the form of the summoner, but does not imitate their will, meaning that, even if the Mimic is a copy of us, it is neither under our control nor will it behave like we do. Regardless of how limited it may actually be, this is a separate entity with its own sentience and decision-making process. As with all spirit summons, the Mimic tier has a cost. In this case, your character must pay 660 HP in order to summon this creature. Most spirit summons require FP to use, so the fact that the Mimic asks for HP makes it particularly special. The HP cost means that we will have access to the Mimic regardless of the mind investment that we make on the character. And this is very useful for builds that shy away from constant magic use. Furthermore, 660 HP is less than the total amount that a single flask of Crimson Tears heals when it is fully upgraded, so it is not a very steep price. All of this is mitigated even further if you level up your Vigor stat. The more HP you have, the less of a burden this cost will be to you. Overall, the Mimic is an accessible and low-cost summon that is very easy to use and will increase the power of almost any character that calls upon it. In all honesty, I believe that at this point in Elden Ring's life, every player should know where they can find the Mimic tier. That said, in order to have a complete guide, I will show you the route to obtain it. If you already know the location, feel free to skip ahead using the timestamps in the description. The first step to obtain the Mimic is to defeat General Radan at his festival. Once you do this, we are treated to a nice cutscene in which our Tarnished notices that the stars are no longer held in place and they can resume their movement. At the end, we see a particularly large one crashes into the lands between. Specifically, it makes contact right here. This area here is in East Limgrave, past the Mistwoods. You will also notice that it is next to Fort Hike where we get to help the great Kenneth Hyde. Here, you will find a huge hole in the ground created by the falling star. The second step is to go down this hole. This will take you into Nokron, the Eternal City. Once here, traverse the city as normal. There are no forking paths or anything of the sort, so you won't get lost. In time, you will reach the Mimic Tier boss battle, so make sure that you take care of it and continue on your way. Cross the large bridge and you will reach the Ancestral Woods. Traverse the woods by sticking to your left and you will reach the Ancestral Woods Site of Grace. Once here, turn around and get closer to the cliff edge where you will notice that there is a section of rooftops that you can reach. Now, you're gonna jump there. My dear viewer, welcome to Knight's Sacred Ground. The third step is to traverse this area as normal. I really don't think there's an opportunity for you to get lost, but you might fall to your death and we don't want that, so respect gravity and pay attention to verticality. You will cross an archway that has honestly seen better days and climb into a cathedral through a side window. 
jump down and to your left, past this altar looking structure, you will find a hallway blocked by a fog door that is opened by offering a stone sword key to the imp statue. Dispose of the enemy and pick up the mimic from the chest. Seeing as how the Mimic is an entity within the game that affects and is affected by enemies, it is important to determine what kind of stats it has. Some of its stats are directly taken from your character, while others are only based on your character indirectly. Furthermore, some stats are affected by the Mimic's upgrade level, while others remain fixed, regardless of how often it is upgraded. All in all, we need to talk about the Mimic's attributes, its FP, its physical absorption, its HP, its stamina, and most importantly, its damage. In the cases of the Mimic's attributes, some of them are copied straight from your character, while others are completely ignored. First of all, your character's Vigor and Mind are not transferred to the Mimic. Your Vigor thus indirectly affect your Mimic, but it does not get your Vigor stat. As for Mind, it is completely irrelevant and has no effect on your Mimic. The Mimic's HP and FP are determined using other systems. Next, your character's Endurance is very important for your Mimic. In this case, your character's Endurance is transferred to your Mimic for the purposes of determining Equip Load only. As a result, your Mimic will have the same Equip Load that your character does. So, be careful because if your character has a heavy load, so will your Mimic. As for Stamina, it is determined using another system. And then, we have to talk about the attributes that govern damage and requirements. These are Strength, Dexterity, Intelligence, Faith, and Arcane. All of these attributes will be directly transferred to your Mimic, but they will only affect the requirements of the weapons and the spells that the Mimic will use. If your character does not have the proper stat requirements to use a weapon or spell when you summon the Mimic, then the Mimic will also not have them. As a result, it will deal very little damage and it will not be able to cast spells that it does not have the requirements for. These attributes have no effect on the Mimic's damage, because damage is determined using another system. In regards to the Mimic's FP, it would seem that it has an unlimited supply of it. Indeed, the Mimic appears to have an infinite amount of FP. Throughout my testing, no matter how many enemies the Mimic fought, and no matter how long it fought for, it simply kept on casting spells with no interruptions. In every single encounter that I tested, the enemies died, and the Mimic kept casting spells at their lifeless bodies. If there is an FP limit, I have not reached it. As for the Mimic's damage absorption, we need to shift our attention to the armor that we are wearing when we summon it. Much like the player, the Mimic receives damage absorption corresponding to the characteristics of the armor that is being used. The more protective the armor, the less damage that the Mimic will take. If we summon the Mimic with the Bull Goat set, it will take a lot less damage than if we were to summon it naked. I tested the damage values of the Mimic while it was wearing different armors and on your screen I am showing you some examples from the testing pool. What you are seeing is the damage that the Mimic takes when being attacked by a Godric soldier wielding a spear by the gate front site of Grace. The table shows the amount of damage that the Mimic took while being naked, while wearing the Prisoner set, while wearing the Bagabond set, and while wearing the Bull Goat set. As you can see, the damage it takes continues to drop the more protective armor it is using. The conclusion is simple. The armor that you are wearing when you summon the Mimic is very important because it is what determines the amount of damage absorption the summon will have at base. If you want your Mimic to be more protected, you will need to wear heavier armor. Moving on to the Mimic's HP, we find that it is a set value based on the relationship between the Mimic's upgrade level and the amount of HP that your character has when you initiate the summon. To put it simply, the more HP that you have, the more HP your Mimic will have. Also, the more you upgrade your Mimic, the more influence your HP will have on it. The specific relationship is detailed in this chart. At plus zero, meaning no upgrades, 
the Mimic will have the same amount of HP as your character when you summon it. If your character has 500 HP, so will your Mimic. This is represented by the HP multiplier of 1. From here, the more you upgrade your Mimic, the higher this HP multiplier is. Once you upgrade the summon to plus 10, the maximum level, the HP multiplier is 3.3, meaning that at plus 10, the Mimic will have more than triple the amount of HP that your character has. And so, the conclusion is simple. The more HP that you have, the more HP the Mimic will have. My dear viewer, if you want to have a long-lasting Mimic, then you need to level your Vigor. That being said, Vigor is not the only determining factor. If you are using the Talisman's Earth Tree Favor and Crimson Amber Medallion, which both boost your character HP, the resulting HP from these increases are also applied to the Mimic. On the other hand, HP boost that your character receives from the runes of the Demigod, meaning things like Morgoth's rune or Radan's rune, do not apply to the Mimic. For example, at 60 Vigor, with the Earth Tree Favor plus 2 and the Crimson Amber Medallion plus 2 equipped, your character will have a total of 2134 HP. If we were to summon a plus 10 Mimic with this amount of HP, then we need to apply the HP multiplier of 3.3. The result is that 2134 character HP multiplied by 3.3 is a fantastic total Mimic HP of 7042 points. This is one hell of a healthy boy. As for the Mimic's stamina, it follows a very similar system to the one used by the Mimic's HP. It is also a set value, but this time it is based on the relationship between the Mimic's upgrade level and the amount of stamina that your character has when you initiate the summon. To put it simply, the more stamina that you have, the more stamina that your Mimic will have. Also, the more you upgrade the Mimic, the more influence your stamina will have on it. This specific relationship is detailed in this chart. At plus zero, meaning no upgrades, the Mimic will have the same amount of stamina that your character has when you summon it. If your character has 100 stamina, so will your Mimic. This is represented by the stamina multiplier of one. From here, the more you upgrade your Mimic, the higher this stamina multiplier is. Once you upgrade the summon to plus 10, the maximum level, the stamina multiplier is 1.488, meaning that at plus 10, the Mimic will receive almost 1.5 times the summoning character stamina. And so, the conclusion is simple. The more stamina you have, the more stamina the Mimic will have. In this case, leveling up your Endurance will provide your Mimic with more stamina. That being said, Endurance is not the only determining factor. If you're using the Talisman's Earth Tree Favor and Viridian Amber Medallion, both which boosts your character's stamina, the resulting stamina from these increases are also applied to the Mimic. On the other hand, stamina boost that your character receives from the Rune of the Demigod, meaning the Radon's Rune, do not apply to the Mimic. Personally, I do not think that the Mimic's stamina is very important. I would not specifically level up my Endurance in order to get more stamina for this summon. That said, it is impossible to ignore that more stamina definitely benefits a Mimic that is using a Great Shield. They are actually very good at blocking attacks, so it is a good idea to provide the Mimic with the tools to be able to block more. It seriously increases the summon's defensive power. The last Mimic stat that I want to touch is its damage. How much damage does the Mimic do? Well, it's actually very simple once we understand how it works. Much like the Mimic's HP and stamina, the amount of damage that it deals is a direct correlation between the Mimic's upgrade level and the amount of damage that the player does. To put it simply, the more damage that you do, the more damage the Mimic will do. Specifically, it follows this chart. At plus zero, the Mimic will deal 25% of the damage that the player does. For you to understand better, if your character deals 100 damage with an R1, then the Mimic will deal 25% of that, meaning 25 damage, with the same attack. From here on, as you upgrade your Mimic, 
the damage it deals increases. Specifically, it increases by 2.5% per level. Now, it is very important to understand that these increases are cumulative or multiplicative. They are not additive. This means that the increases are not added together. Instead, they are multiplied into the total value of the prior increase. As a result, the Mimic gets a higher damage increase than it would if we were to just add all of these bonuses together. In the end, at plus 10, the Mimic will deal a maximum base damage of 60% of the total damage that the player deals. You may think that 60% of player damage is not a lot of damage. That said, taking into consideration how high we can actually get a character's damage output, we are still talking about huge numbers. You also have to remember that the Mimic is a whole other entity on the battlefield, and that means it also provides us with things like aggro sharing, stance breaks, and status effect applications. It is also important to understand that this damage applies to any spell that the Mimic uses as well. It is not just melee attacks. Overall, it represents a big increase to the battle capabilities of our build, and that, my dear viewer, is extremely valuable. Besides stats, the Mimic will also inherit any and all equipment that the player character has active at the moment that it is summoned. This includes weapons, armor, talismans, memorized spells, arrows, and consumables. This is simple to understand, but there is a lot that we can do with these conditions. For example, when it comes to weapon, the Mimic gets a perfect copy of the one that the player uses. This includes Ash of War and any potential special effects. The perfect example is the Blasphemous Blade, because the Mimic will have access to the Ash of War, Taker's Flame, and that is a fantastic tool to have the summon deal a lot of damage, but also heal itself. A similar situation happens with armor. As we saw earlier, the Mimic will be summoned with the same armor that the player is wearing, including its defenses and its weight. A Mimic wearing heavier armor will take less damage. Talisman selection is also very important when it comes to summoning the Mimic. We already explained that the talismans that increase HP or stamina will also affect the Mimic's HP and stamina, but we can also increase its defenses with the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman. There are also some other strategies that we can take advantage of, like equipping Shavriri's Woe before summoning the Mimic and then swapping it for another talisman after we do the summon. In this way, the Mimic will have this talisman active and it will be more likely to draw aggro. The bottom line is simple. Whatever talisman effect you're taking advantage of will also apply to the Mimic at the moment you ring the bell. As for spells, the Mimic will have access to every spell on your list, whether they are sorceries or miracles, offensive spells or defensive. If they are in your attunement slots, the Mimic will have access to them. This obviously opens the possibility of setting up a caster Mimic, but it is also important to understand that the Mimic will cast any spell on this list almost randomly. It does not choose the right spell for the right moment. It simply chooses one and fires away. Finally, let's make a quick mention of consumables. The Mimic will have access to all of the consumables that you have equipped to your tool belt. There are many slots to fill with many different consumables and the Mimic has access to all of them. My favorite consumables to have ready are sleeping pots, freezing pots, boiled crab, and warming stones. This gives the Mimic access to the sleeping condition, the frostbite condition, as well as the capability to further increase its defensive power and provide us with some light healing. But that is not the limit. You can equip a Baldekin's Blessing and create an unstoppable monster, or you can give some perfumes to provide support for the player. Consumables are probably one of the most customizable parts of the Mimic next to spells. You will be surprised how much the summon changes depending on these options. Still, it is very important to remember that no matter what you give the Mimic, it still needs the requirements to use it. If you equip spells that you cannot use or weapons that you cannot wield, the same will happen to the summon. For the Mimic to be able to use it, you need to be able to use it. This sounds obvious, doesn't it? But keep it in mind. For example, if you use a weapon with two hands to meet the strength requirement, 
there is no guarantee that the Mimic will use the same weapon with two hands. If the Mimic decides to swing the weapon with just one hand, it will not meet the requirements and its damage will be useless. Take this into consideration when setting up your Mimic. There is nothing worse than summoning it and noticing that you wasted the opportunity. Going back in time to the point when Elden Ring was recently released, the Mimic Summon was absolutely incredible. It's still fantastic now, but back then, it was also smart. It would actually make good decisions, attack the proper targets, and use the proper skills and abilities. This made it so that the Mimic could solo a lot of bosses and clear out entire rooms with no issue. Again, it can still do these things, but it used to be so efficient at it that the player could put their controller down and still come out victorious. And then we got 1.03. This patch did two things. It nerfed the Mimic's damage and it, quote, changed the spirit's behavior pattern end quote. Unfortunately, this change in behavior was drastic and the Mimic was lobotomized. The result is that the Mimic went from being really, really smart to being really, really stupid. It went from always making the right decision to always making the wrong one. This, of course, decreases the Mimic efficiency, but it does not make it unusable. Far from it, actually. We just need to pay some special attention to it. In the present, the best way to increase the power of the Mimic is to follow one simple mantra. Less is more. My dear viewer, the less options you give to your Mimic, the more profit you will get out of it. For example, if you're making a caster Mimic, do not put 10 spells on your list. Put only 3. The more spells that a Mimic has access to, the higher the chance that it will cast the wrong one. On the other hand, with only a few spells to choose from, it will use the better option more often. Personally, I like to give my Mimic a great hammer and a great shield. This way, it has access to blocking, it has access to attacking, and it has access to an Ash of War. Just three things. Usually, I want my Mimic to be tanky and provide me with additional stance damage to all of my enemies. All it has to do is rush the target and start hitting it. I will take care of the rest. Since the Mimic has few options to choose from, I never have issues with the summon becoming annoying. Even after the nerf, the Mimic continues to be a powerhouse and, once again, in my opinion, I believe that it is still the best summon in the game. We just need to be a bit more attentive in making sure that it has everything it needs to succeed. With this information, you should have a better understanding on how to optimize the capabilities of your Mimic. You can make a Support Mimic, a Tank Mimic, a Casting Mimic, a Berserker Mimic, any kind of Mimic that you want. All it takes is some creativity and some knowledge. After that, you will see the power of your build increase because when there are two of you on the screen, it should be impossible to stop you. In all honesty, the Mimic is the true easy mode of the game because all of this customizability and all of this power leads to the player having almost every option in the game available to them at one time. Personally, I love this thing. It is an extension of my build and that just gives me another thing that I can min-max. That being said, it is still important to remember that no matter how strong the Mimic might be, it will only be as strong as your character. At the end of the day, your build continues to be the one true deciding factor. Thank you very much for your time, and I hope I get to see you on the next one.